Assalamualaikum and a very good day I bid to Madam Sharon and to all of our fellow classmates. Today my group are going to present on the Islamic financial instruments focus on the tax implication. Before we are going to proceed with the presentation, I'm going to introduce to our fellow teammates which are Nur Atira, Nur Afika, Nur Ismani, me myself Tisara and Shahirun Safadini. The report will contain of an introduction to the report an overview toward the Islamic finance, the types of the Islamic financial instrument, the tax treatment to the Islamic financial instrument, and lastly, the conclusion. I'm going to proceed with the introduction part. Uh, a brief introduction about the Islamic finance is that Islamic finance has been introduced because of the pressure from the Islam population. First experiment to implement the Islamic finance is in a rural area of Pakistan country. Then it started to spread in the Middle East and the North Africa countries. And lately, it has been spreading to the Asia Pacific countries, such as the Malaysia and a few in the Europe countries. The Islamic finance is constructed based on the Islamic principles and need to comply with the Sharia, as well as the ethical value of the Islam religion, which are fairness, transparency, and risk sharing. The Islamic financial instrument is quite the same as the conventional financial instrument, but the dynamic and the fundamental of the Islamic financial instrument is need to be based on the Sharia and the Islamic principles. A line of the report is that we will start with the overview, which we will discuss on the more on the fundamental principle in Islamic finance, and also discuss on the differences between the Islamic and the conventional finance. Next, we proceed with the type of the Islamic financial instrument where we will discuss on the different type of financial instrument, the t -like instrument, the debt like instrument, as well as the fixed claim instrument together with the uh, examples. Next, we will proceed with the most important part in the report which are the tax treatment where the tax treatment will be, well, the explanation will be closely related to the Income Tax Act and all the related enactment as well as the incentive involved. And lastly, the conclusion where we will summarize by all the important points and we will read more of you on the advantage and disadvantage of the Islamic finance. Note that the detail will only be on the Islamic financial instrument and the information provided are up to date. That's all for my part. Uh, I will pass to the next presenter. So now, we are moving on on the overview. Muslims live their daily life with the guidance of their own law, Sharia, which is a law that based on the combination of sources like the Quran, the Hadith, and also the Fatwas. The history of Islamic financial system can be dated back during the Islamic Golden Era, which is in 8th to 12th centuries, where there are many innovative concepts and techniques applied in the early Islamic banking, and some of the concepts and techniques are bills of exchange, first form of partnership, Mufawada, earliest forms of capital almal, capital accumulation, checks, and promissory notes. There are four major categories being banned in Islamic system. The first is element prohibited since inception. And the things that they under these elements are usury, which is riba, ambiguity in contract, warar, and gambling, which also known as maisir in Arabic. Second is the element that are prohibited if proven to be, which are threat, tahdid, mistake, ghalat, Injustice, Zul, Deception, Khida, and Exploitation, Istiqlal. The third major category is uh, fraudulent and misconduct. And the lastly is on Monopoly, Ihtikar. Hi, I will talk about the types of financial instruments. There is a uh, Type of in Islamic finance, which is Mularobah, Mucharaka, Ijara, Murubahat, Istisna, and Ihanu, also called Flood. 
Udoraba is an agreement between capital and entrepreneur that is a special kind of partnership. The Mushoroka is a joint enterprise of partnership contribute capital for purpose finance and enterprise. Ijara is to transfer the uses of non-consumable asset by the owner lesser uh, to lessee. Murubaha is a particular kind of sale and not information on its origin, which using the cost plus profit benefits. This is not a contract to sell to a purchaser a non-existence asset that is to be constructed. Okay. And also the Aranu is a contract where a party pledges an asset as collateral to another party. And the car loan is a contract established when ownership of a sum of money belonging to the lender is transferred to the borrower and the borrower is free to pay. I will explain in detail which is Mudaroba, uh, contract parties, contract parties, share profits. And the capital must be absolute currency in red cash. And also the profit share between Rabuma and Mudorek. The Mushoraka is uh, in contract parties, um, in growth in financial arrangement, uh, and have right to exercise executive power. The capital only based on the monetary form. The profit actual work and get profit according to their job. The type of Mushoraka is Shirka al milk and so Shirka al hop The Ijara based on an Islamic financial transaction, the two primary structures of the Ijara, operating and financial. Uh, in Malaysia, they have a sale which is called Ijara Atuma Babai or R type, is very common in air vehicle financing. And Murabaha is the, they are this, this distinction feature of the sale is the seller disclose the cost to the buyer, non profit is added. Basic rule of uh, Murabaha financing is renegotiation, discounting, and also asset to be masked, must exist. And the type of product is Murabaha and also Murabaha to the purchase or the uh, There is this not always a thing which needs manufacturing. The assets manufacturing must meet spec specification to the order and the buyer has the right not to take possession. And the Arahnu is also a term of pawning that involving in the pawning gold or take cash from the bank and we pay later the full amount. Uh, financing plus the storage cost and the court loan is borrower has always has the obligation to pay to repay the subject matter in a court contract to the lender and in all circumstances the pillars of court are mokrit mutari and omal and also siha For tax regulation in Islamic finance instrument, Malaysia said do not have any special tariff regulation to managing Islamic finance instrument. However, in the Income Tax Act 1967 and Stamp Duty Act state the obligation of Islamic transaction as discovered below. For the Stamp Duty Act, this exemption will be released to certify this Islamic finance contract it will not negatively charge us as contracts with the standard funding and transaction, according to MIA 2012. In Income Tax Act 1967, there are four sections that related to Islamic finance instrument. First, Section 2, Subsection 7 is for income same as riba will not accept in some Sharia will be considered as traditional finance scheme like income for taxable income. Second is Section 2, Subsection 8 which is solo enable Islamic banking to proceed with like no taxing problem such as leasing. Third is is section 6a subsection 3 explain about rebate for any islamic religions due payment like zakat fitrah and lastly section 18 part 3 explain about insurance for stamp duty exemption there are five exemptions that relate to the islamic finance instrument that highlighted in this topic first stamp duty exemption number eight order 2000 explain that exemption of council tax from all al ijarah heat leasing arrangement contract on real property contracted in between the consumer and the banker according to arrangement of the al ijarah term financing mechanism Number two, exemption number same duty exemption number nine order two thousand is exemption for both the property selling contract and even the asset purchase contract 
conclude between such a client and a banker. Number three, stamp duty exemption. Number 38, order 2002 is exemption of all product like by INA selling contract and by INA purchase contract conclude between the consumer and the financial company. Number 4, stamp duty exemption. Number 2, order 2004 is any transaction established between a client and the funder according to an asset sale contract or indeed the property rental contract established under principle of the Sharia with a view of a renewal of almost is or any Islamic lending financial institution. Lastly, stand duty assumption number 3, order 2004 is both agreement created either by the financial institution associated with the acquisition of property for the purpose of including its rent back following the principle of Sharia or under the principle of the purchase and sale arrangement through with the financial institution assume the contract agreement of a client. I will pass the presentation for the next person. Now, we move to conclusion part. Islamic instruments nowadays is used as another alternative besides conventional financial instruments that helps Muslim to have proper Sharia compliant in handling their money. In order to ensure people follow the proper compliant, Islamic financial instruments has proposed three types of instruments, which is equity-like, debt-like, and fixed claim instruments. Moreover, Islamic finance has complied with Income Tax Act of 1967 and stamp duty exemption. This act is important to avoid forbidden likes, interest, riba, gambling, miser, and uncertainty horror from happen. This with this report, we hope relation will use this Islamic finance more in the future because Islamic practice, transparency, ethical, and moral dimensions, and discouraging speculation. With that, I end our group presentation. Thank you.